Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing three things to look for in a fellowship. Friends, it is right there in Acts chapter 2 and 42. The Bible says that they would meet in the temple courts. Now, this is before the temple of Herod was destroyed. And then they would move from house to house. And there were three things that they were doing. Actually, it was another thing mentioned. But I'm going to give you the main three things that we should be looking for in a fellowship. Number one. They continued in the doctrines of the apostle. And we know that the apostles, which means sent messengers, sent ones, these are the men who were with Jesus. And the doctrines of the apostles were the teachings, the instructions of Jesus. That word doctrine is translated in the Hebrew or Greek, rather, as instruction. So they continued in the instructions that were being given to them that the apostles received from Jesus. So the primary centerpiece of a fellowship should be the teachings of Jesus Christ, which we know can be found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we know that the Old Testament is, it, it pointed and prepared us to receive the New Testament and friends, it is vitally important to look for those teachings because it is Jesus Christ who sacrificed for our sin. And he gave his disciples many instructions in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were constantly recording what they heard and what they saw. So at any point, if you feel confusion in um, your understanding about the kingdom of God, how to identify corruption is vitally important. Just study the life and the teachings of Jesus. So we're looking for the uh, doctrines of Christ, they were breaking bread, communion, which Jesus had before he went to the cross. He broke bread. They drank wine, which was symbolic of his shed blood. This is what they did, and this is what we should be doing. Uh, taking communion has become like a, a nuisance to most churches. They just throw it off on the once a month. It's very robotic. It's very commercial almost. It's very... It, it's it's just something that people do to pass on, you know, the day once a month. But friends, communion was very important because you're communing with other believers. And Jesus said, as often as you do take communion, it was symbolic of his death, a burial, his resurrection, the shed blood. So communion should be not something that's regarded as just a, you know, a old dead tradition because that's how people regard it. It's very sad, friends, to see how people just kind of casually go about communion because this is a time that we come into remembrance of our Savior's sacrifice. So you're looking for the doctrines of Jesus. You're looking for breaking of bread. And you're also looking that that church fellowship on a regular basis, there is prayer. Everything is nestled in that Developed with prayer. And this is where it's important for those of you who are stewarding any fellowship that you don't make prayer a, a, a celebrity type thing where only certain people pray. Everybody should pray. And if they don't know how to pray, we should encourage them how to just talk to God. This is not a show off situation. We should earnestly be praying one for another, for our nation, for leadership. That's what we should be doing when we come together. But this is almost impossible when you go into these larger church uh, edifices where there is no teaching against sin, there is no teaching of repentance, there is no fear of God, there is no reverence, um, there is blatant sin, there is half-naked women everywhere. Friends, when you're in these types of settings, there is no prayer. And if it is, it's just a little quick dab of do you so they can move on with the what? Program. 
some manufactured program. And you got to remember, you want to be where prayer is because usually that's when the spirit of the Lord begins to use and speak through us. That's right, friends. When the anointing usually is coming upon us, the scriptures tells us that they were in prayer. That's what they were doing when the spirit says, separate Paul and Barnabas. And that began the first mission trip of these two men. They were in prayer. They were in a prayer meeting. Friends, let me tell you, I love prayer. I love prayer meetings. I love to be in the midst of the brethren and everyone is praying. Everyone is praying their own burden, their own heart. It is the most precious time, friends. In fact, I had a beautiful time this past weekend at a church, at a house church. It was marvelous. It was a very small group of us, but friends, it was powerful. And this is where the gifts of the Spirit will often manifest. Amen? The voice of the Lord, the will of the Lord. This is why we do seek to have fellowship. And if you can't find a physical place to have fellowship, get on. Don't forget, go to my channel. Oh, well, you're already on the channel if you're watching the video. But click on my channel and look for the video how to meet sincere followers of Jesus. There are hundreds of you that have put your email. You can have a conference call where you begin to pray one for another and the gifts of the spirit. I'm telling you, friends, when you engage God through prayer, this is usually, I'm telling you, friends, the Holy Spirit be showing up. So you could do it through telephone. You could have a conference call. Whether you live in Africa, New Zealand, people are getting to know one another from all over the world from that video. So go click on um, the channel, Motivating You to Win. Put in the search, How to Meet Sincere Followers of Jesus. And just go and scroll through those comments and pull the emails, email a few people and take it from there. But friends, this is why God has allowed us to congregate in these platforms such as YouTube, because there is a famine in the land and we still want to be able to lift our voices towards heaven in unison in prayer. And those scriptures tells us we ought to always pray. So you got to be friends looking for a fellowship where prayer prayer is important. And those of you who are stewarding these meetings, do not just allow the same people to pray. Everybody should pray. That's right. That's how we do meetings. Friends, everybody should pray. This is not, you know, this is not, um, you know, about eloquence of speech. You know, it's not about none of it. It's about praying the heart of God, the will of God to be done, amen, in our lives. So there you have three things that you need to primarily be looking for. And besides that, you should expect rebuke. Rebuke is the love language of heaven because that is what usually will rub you the wrong way and get you back in the straight and narrow. Amen. So God bless you, friends. There's three things. Acts chapter 2 and 42 tells us they continued in the instructions of Jesus. They were breaking bread and prayer. And also another scripture says what? And they were praising God. So singing and worshiping and just, just you know, moving from the cares of life to lift up our hearts towards our Heavenly Father, friends. That's what you're looking for. You're not looking for someone to watch your kids. See, most people look for a church for somebody to watch your kids and teach them Jesus. No, mm -mm. you're supposed to be teaching your children the fear of the Lord. You only go to a fellowship, friends, for what, an hour or two, once a week, maybe twice a week. How would you expect somebody else to teach your children? That's our job, friends, to teach them the fear of the Lord. We're not going to church for a choir. We're not going to church to, to sing songs from the pray from the naked praise team. No, we ain't doing that. We're not going to get our ears tickled, friend. We're going so we could be empowered, so we can be uh, put, put in the mind to do the will of the Father. Amen and amen. God bless you, friends. Enough said. Till next time. God bless you, my friend. And don't forget to go check out that video and, and scroll down the comments, put your email in and pull, copy and paste others' emails and introduce yourself and watch God bless you. Amen. Because we are getting praise reports. Many people are starting friendships and fellowships from that video. Amen. So God bless you, friend. Till next time. God bless.